All right, guys, Philip DeFranco just dropped a video. Now, usually, we don't, like, react to this stuff because I, I watch them regularly, but usually I just don't react to them. However, you know, I figured, hey, why not? Might as well react to this video on stream, guys. Now, I do skip through, like, the politics kind of stuff because I'm just not interested in that. You typically get that in the video, but let's check it out, guys. Taylor Sit, Swift Drama, uh, Linus Tech Tips Update. Let's check it out. Today, we're talking about huge updates to the Linus Tech Tips controversy and allegations. You've got experts pleading with Swifties and the Beehive to change their ways. The FAA is investigating thousands of pilots who might actually be unfit to fly. We can add brain worms to the list of things we got to worry about. And we need to bring brain worms. Oh my gosh. Break down the tragic shooting in Jacksonville, Florida this weekend. We're talking. So, if you're wondering why uh, when I loaded up the video, it has subtitles, it's because. Uh, there's like a like a certain tag you can put in your YouTube videos and that will actually automatically enable subtitles. Uh, YouTubers do it to uh, add retention to their videos, which is a pretty smart business move if you do. If I do say so myself, guys, but about all that and so much more in today's brand new philip defranco show you daily dive into the news so buckle up hit that like button and let's just jump into it starting with we got to talk about big updates to the whole linus tech tips controversy because they just came back right, there were major ethical concerns being raised about how they handle reviews sponsorship relationships and error corrections not to mention the community yeah, they said they were going to upload wednesday they uploaded like friday or something guys Asian breakdown that led to them selling off products they didn't own alongside allegations that they had a work environment that allowed for sexual harassment and new video that they just came back with touches on a lot of these things but not everything right? such as the sexual harassment allegations although very notably they did say they were hiring outside investigators to look into it and they'll publish the results but what they did talk a lot about was how they want to move forward handling things like errors first off saying their team that handles all the actual testing will now be watching review versions of every video to ensure the data is being presented correctly but also beyond that there's now a huge set of guidelines in the works that's publicly available to see how they plan to deal with any mistake bro He's a whole business, bro. Like, 100 employees from YouTubing. Whenever they may be caught. Some are considered small mistakes or require no fixes, such as if a sentence is phrased in a way that 99% of people would understand. Or the example they gave was if they say display port. Display ports? Oh my gosh. Port is better than HDMI. And given their audience, they assume that everyone will understand that they're comparing the most modern versions of those standards. But also saying for different issues, like, they'll have a huge... Like, there's so many specifics that you gotta go for, but... And they receive backlash for it, guys. Like, you know... I could imagine the workload. They, you know, I, I do think they're trying to do good here, though. Huge range of fixes. That includes everything from pinned comments to on-screen fixes to reshooting sections to just flat out taking a video. But I'm, I'm, I'm I think they're handling this very professionally, guys. Which one? I'd love to know your thoughts in general, but especially if you're a part of that community, I would love your reaction to to what they're planning here. They also said they're adding a group of ten or so community members, at least to start, who are experts in their fields to essentially be a kind of crowdsourced fact-checking program. You know, while that was about half of the video, it wasn't the only thing they talked about. Linus also clarified they do actually have an HR team that it's not just him and his wife handling all the complaints and it hasn't been that way in a while. He also pointed to benefits that they offer their employees and that they'd be doubling the mental health benefits because... In recent weeks, a shocking number of our team members have been harassed, bullied, and even threatened on social media. So, effective September 2023, we have doubled our coverage for mental health counseling. Dang, bro, he's getting so big, he has to, you know, for mental health. And all I have to say other than that is that if you're one of the people who engaged in this behavior, I refuse to refer to you as members of our community. You know who you are, and shame on you. What? Oh, snap, bro. Come in. You guys, what, what the heck? He knows who he's going Not after. one of our team members deserved that. We have a zero tolerance policy for any of that crap, and we always have. With all that, you also had Linus trying to emphasize- Dang, bro. I've never seen Linus act like that, guys. Any of the perks, benefits, HR changes, and other things that they addressed have been going on for months or even years. Right, so essentially arguing it's not a knee-jerk reaction. And as far as the reaction to the video, it generally seems positive. Or their What Do We Do Now video from like 12 days ago has 188,000 likes to 192,000 yeah, dislikes. I'm sure we all miss Linus, guys. You know, I, I would check his channel nearly every day or at least once a week to see, you know, what cool videos he uploads. I don't watch all of them or not. Or, or you know, because it's just, you know... Tough to you know watch all the videos when he doesn't upload that daily when he uploads daily and stuff because I'm not interested in every single one. A lot of them are just like super technical computer stuff or just like building a PC 
which you know I'll probably maybe skip through some of it, but you know he gets highly technical in his videos. But this new video has 167,000 likes to just 18,000 dislikes. And while this new video has fewer views, it seems good for them. Of course, we'll have to look. Well, of course, it's gonna have fewer views, man. He just uploaded it yesterday. Usually, videos that you know are older have more views, guys. Back in the weeks and months and even years to come to see what kind of impact this had. Was it a speed bump or is this a lasting wound? And then, you know, if I'm being honest, I, I feel like you don't have enough anxiety in your life. But I'm about to fix that and I'm gonna put a new fear in your brain. And that's because there's a 64 year old woman in the news. She I'm good, man. I don't want anxieties, guys. Parasitic worm she lives in Australia and she complained about pretty much having every symptom you can imagine for three weeks. Right, dry cough, diarrhea, abdominal pain, fever. Bro, that, that's so scary to have, man. I'm legit scared of aging, bro. Because I'm going to be more susceptible to illnesses. And that's scary. Fever, night sweats. But it wasn't until she came in because she was dealing with forgetfulness and depression that she was sent for an MRI. Which is also when a neurosurgeon working on the case told her colleague, Oh my God, you wouldn't believe what I just found in this lady's brain. And it's a lot. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know there's brain worms, man. What? Even even uh, got the scared the neurologist, bro. Live and wriggling. Which hey, I am not a medical professional, but that doesn't sound great. Now, fortunately, the doctors were able to get this thing out of the lady's head safely, but they were still at a loss for what exactly it was. Right? They knew that it was a roundworm, but species that affect brains aren't exactly a thing in humans. And so they decided to send the still alive worm to a parasite specialist for testing, who then told them it was a worm with an excessively long Latin name. But when they identified it, it came as a shock because it's never been recorded in human beings. And so the running theory right oh, now is that a old woman liked to collect wild grasses for cooking in an area that's inhabited wild grass what the python okay okay it's normal victim and it's believed that because she used the grasses for name bro you think she was around the grasses so much she never mind uh, i was gonna say something ridiculous like you know her, you know she kind of like mer like a dna kind of merge but that's kind of ridiculous right like you know so like she's more just because she's around the python she'd be like more like them but I don't know, guys. Just disregard what I'm saying cooking it was passed on to her so now doctors are moving to try and give her anti-parasite medications to kill off any others that are in her as well as their larva however they're in a bit of an odd spot they want to go fast because many organs can be extremely damaged by parasites like this such as the brain hey bro brain worm how do you even get that out bro brain. but at the same time the body has a tendency to cause massive inflammation in the areas these worms and larvae die which you know swelling in the brain less than ideal but yeah i guess the main point of this i really hope she she uh gets his brain worm out of her man story is add worms in brain as a, a new fun little fear for yourself and then taylor swift beyonce and barbie have all been boosting the economy this summer but have their fans also been killing the planet that is something that's actually being debated right now for a number of reasons or because all these events have prompted the millions of people going to them to go and buy a special outfit to match the tour or movie an outfit that may very well only be worn once and in many cases people are turning to fast fashion an industry that is reportedly responsible for 10 percent of total global carbon emissions and results in tons of clothes sitting in landfills every year and you know a lot of retailers have made shopping for these shows a very easy thing to do you know if you're stumped on what to wear to the eras tour you just search eras tour on shein you get pages and pages of results some inspired by taylor's on Stage outfits or previous looks or just matching certain eras in her career the exact same also happens when you search renaissance tour or barbie outfits and well i like the outfit so looking back this is actually kind of a new phenomenon you know in the past people of course wanted to look good at concerts and there have always been people that want to go doesn't bro what's so bad about it what's so bad about it all out but this expectation that all fifty thousand plus people would be following a strict and extravagant dress code is pretty new and with that you actually oh okay okay sorry had sustainability experts telling USA Today that it's tied to a bunch of cultural changes. Right? Things like post COVID, you have people extra excited to have some place to go and look good and be a part of something. And on top of that, social media marketing and the desire to share outfits online have really influenced that. I mean, if you go to TikTok right now, the hashtag Eras Tour Outfits has 1.3 billion. Dude, these outfits are pretty awesome, yo. <laughs> I, I like them. And that doesn't even include all the related searches, having millions or even hundreds of millions. Yo, what? Yo, wow, she, she's she got some cool outfits, man. Right, so it's this fun thing. It also adds some pressure to do it as well. And according to Dude, they're so awesome, man. I like most of them, bro. Sustainable fashion expert Alden Wicker. A lot of these outfits just aren't clothes that you can wear in the real world every day. And some pointing out that it's not just influencer culture. You also have artists like Beyonce telling concert goers herself to match a certain look. But they're asking fans going to shows a fall in Virgo season, which is the end of August through most of September, to wear sparkly silver outfits so the crowd looks like one big disco ball. And what? You're just not gonna listen to Beyonce? So you have all these fans who are attending shows in just a. Uh, oh my gosh. Alright, guys. Uh. This is a point where I usually skip through it, guys. I wish it was a s smaller video, but 
I don't know, it just, you know, dives deep into it a lot, guys. It's fine. Oh, let's go to the next one. Oh, yeah, let's see. We'll, we'll listen to his sponsorship a little because, you know, I don't want to disregard it. 53.7 million TikTok videos. It's overwhelming. It can all get so confusing. So I got to say, there's one company standing strong for scientific integrity and transparency, and that's Seed. And what sets Seed apart is their commitment to science. Like, these guys aren't messing around. It's not just... I used to buy like uh, anti-aging stuff and it would come in that container. I'm not sure if it's the same company. It's just a probiotic. But... It's a symbiotic. And that's an important distinction because it's a blend of prebiotics and probiotics that support a healthy gut biome. And look, I'm not a doctor, but I care what I'm putting inside my body. And Seeds DSR <laughs> one is now a vital part of my daily routine. So if you're ready... Dang, he's, he's promoting health supplements. Okay, okay, next. Kind of par for the course for him lately. It actually... Fun. free shipping and then elon musk just had this very embarrassing thing happen to him and while it seems kind of par for the course for him lately it actually highlights a really big problem that more and more people have been screaming about because if you didn't see elon musk just live streamed a supremely awkward moment to millions of people during a demo of tesla's fsd or full self-driving beta v12 software with them seen driving the vehicle toward an intersection but when the car tries to run straight through a red light he has to step in like i said this is it's a little slow because uh Dang, bro, I really want to invest in a... I'm really trying to save up for a Tesla, but... Stuff like this is happening. We're driving around in basically rush hour. Oh, oh, oh intervention. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Dang, bro, I mean, it's it's not fully programmed well. But you, you can ex expect those kind of things to happen, right, guys? So that's our first intervention. Now, in his defense, the software on display in that video isn't available to the public yet, so they're still working out the kinks. Plus, Tesla and other autonomous vehicle companies argue that their self-driving cars are safer than the human-controlled alternative. But, notably, this is not an isolated incident, and incident... I mean, compare if we compare... I wonder if we, we gotta compare on average, like, 100,000 Tesla vehicles to, like, 100,000 regular drivers and see what gets in more accidents, right, guys? Uh... He did say that, you know, Teslas do are more um, efficient, right, guys? So, I, I honestly believe them, guys, but, you know, Teslas are just amazing cars in general, in my opinion. Still produced a chronic PR headache for the companies. In fact, according to a Washington Post analysis in June, there were 736 U.S. crashes since 2019 involving Teslas in autopilot mode, and that number growing fast. Yeah, bro. Oh, wow. That's quite a bit, though. ...during recent months. It was also including at least 17 fatal incidents, 11 of which happened... No! Since what? ...May of 2022. And so we've seen... Oh, that's pretty sad, ...a man. growing chorus of voices demanding a number of things. Some just want regulation. Other want complete abolition of self-driving technology. And one of the biggest... No, no, no. no. Don't do that. I I'm adamantly opposed to doing that, guys. Don't, 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 don't oppose it. I mean, you, you can oppose it if you want, but... I I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proponent of it, guys. Not gonna lie. Like... Anti-autonomous vehicle activism has been San Francisco, which you know has really emerged as a testing ground for the technology. Right there, the two big companies are General Motors, Cruise, and Alphabet's Waymo, both of which offer driverless taxi services throughout the city. And in the past several months, we've seen them run red lights, block crosswalks and bike paths, get stuck in newly poured concrete. Damn, bro. It's like, kind of scary, man. Kind of scary, bro. And hit and kill a dog. And in fact, just recently, Ouch. San Francisco police and fire services counted 55 incidents over the past six months where self-driving cars got in the way of rescue operations. Dang, bro. Kind of scary, man. It's just going to start malfunctioning, bro. That's why Tesla makes you uh, be alert at the wheel, guys. You can't really doze off or anything just yet. It's like there's just so much stuff going. You're, you're traveling in physical space, bro, where just stuff can happen. You know what I mean? With them doing things like refusing to move for first responders, driving through yellow tape, blocking firehouse driveways, and running over fire hoses. And in one, Dang, bro. one instance, a car reportedly failed to stop while advancing towards firefighters battling a blaze, with one of them even having to smash its window to make it stop. But despite all the issues and the complaints, the California Public Utilities Commission voted three to one to let the two companies run their vehicles at all hours of the day. And at the time, crews said that it ran 100 vehicles. Wow, guys. In San Francisco during the day and 300. So, so <laughs> it's good for business, I guess, man, but it's kind of... They just got to work on their, uh, you know, emergency, emergency response better. And also, of course, you know, we don't want them to freaking run into dogs or anything, bro. Like, 
injured at night. But then just a week later, the Department of Transportation forced crews to cut that number in half after one of its cars crashed into a fire truck last week. And now we're also seeing things like an He's messing up with fire trucks and stuff. group of activists called Safe Street Rebel carrying out dozens of so-called coning stunts and protests. Right, you might have seen things like people wearing dark clothes and masks darting out onto the road, placing a big orange traffic cone on the car's hood and then running away. And then if all goes to plan, the vehicle's side lights should start flashing orange and it just sits there completely immobilized until someone comes and removes the Damn bro, coning guys. What the heck? Cone. With one of the orange. It doesn't it doesn't cover see that that's why AI is not not at the best guys. They can't it gets uh, you know, it breaks down when coning happens of all things. Didn't expect to word, use that word in my life, by the and way. I was just explaining that it's meant to create this captivating image. Where you have one of these self-driving cars with billions of dollars of... Taken out by a simple cone. Venture capital investment money in R&D. Just being disabled by a common traffic cone. But notably, all of this happening as these cars are spreading out nationwide. Right, Waymo is already giving rides in Phoenix and is testing human safety drivers in Los Angeles and Austin. And Cruz is offering rides in Phoenix and Austin. And it would be best if you had like a human occupant that can, you know, just get a full salary while... You know, just keeping the car safe, like in the case anything goes bad while somebody's riding in there, right, guys? That's it. But that that's something the billionaires just don't want to pay for. You know what I mean? And testing in Dallas, Houston, Miami, Nashville, and Charlotte. And so as far as if this industry is going to be boom or bust, and how many people do or don't die in the process, we're going to have to wait. Or, or, or some are, some are. Sorry to see because i will say it feels like it's all but guaranteed that this is going to be a part of our future and so it feels like in the meantime the only question is uh what is the road gonna be like right how paved or unpaved is it and then air traffic controllers are short staffed and overworked planes are having near misses multiple times a week and now we're finding out that many pilots may actually be unfit to fly but the washington post reporting that the faa is looking into nearly 5,000 pilots suspected of falsifying their medical records to conceal mental health disorders and other serious physical conditions that would bar them from the cockpit and reportedly about 600 of these pilots are license to fly for passenger airlines with most others holding commercial licenses for things like cargo firms corporate clients or tour companies and as far as how this was uncovered many of these pilots allegedly downplay their medical conditions to the faa and then exaggerate them to the va to maximize their benefit. all right we're gonna skip to the next one Ability fraud. And then we have to talk about the tragic mass shooting that happened in Jacksonville, Florida this weekend. Because on Saturday, a 21 year old white man with tactical gear donning an AR style rifle and a handgun entered a Dollar General. And there, he shot and killed three black people before taking his own life in an attack that authorities have said was racially motivated. And there's probably a good chance it is, right, guys? Officials saying the gunman first drove to Edward. For a second, I thought it said Japan. I'm a little bit dyslexic. This is Jacksonville. Waters University, a historically black college, and parked on campus but was denied entry. With the school saying in a statement that a security guard spotted the shooter and asked him to leave after he refused to identify himself. And notably here, Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters said during a news conference yesterday that it remains unclear why the gunman chose to park at the college, which is near the Dollar General. But right now, he does not believe that the gunman actually intended to target anyone at the school, saying it looks to me that he went there to change into whatever he needed to change into. With the shooter being seen putting on a bulletproof vest and latex gloves before driving away, which the college also reported in a call to police, notifying them of a suspicious person. But after that, he drove to the Dollar General near campus and entered the parking lot, firing 11 rounds into a car and killing the first victim. He then entered the store and opened fire using the that's, that's pretty sad, bro. AR-style rifle, which authorities said was painted with white swastika. I can't believe people do this, man. What? Because while in the store, he shot and killed two other victims, including one man who entered the store with his... That's so sad, bro. I feel for everybody that, you know, went through it, like... At Family members that went through this, bro, is so sad. Girlfriend. Very notably here, Sheriff Waters said he didn't shoot at anyone in the store who was white. And reportedly, at one point, he even allowed several people, including some white people, to leave the store during his rampage. Police then arrived 11 minutes after the attack began, which is when they believe the gunman killed himself. Also, according to the sheriff, the shooter texted his father during the shooting and told him to break into his room and go on his computer, where the father said he found a suicide note, a will, and racist writing. With his family then calling the police, but of course, by then, the shooting was already underway. And in the presser yesterday, Waters described the racist writings as manifestos that detailed his hatred of black people and saying, plainly put, this shooting was racially motivated and he hated black people. And Attorney General Merrick Garland saying in a statement yesterday that the DOJ is investigating the shooting as a hate crime and an act of racially motivated violent extreme. Taking my head, bro. Now, now his father's like, oh, oh my gosh, bro. Like, I can't believe that. Also now, very significantly here, police- I'm, I'm legitimately upset at this, bro. 
Have said that the About man this. was involved in two concerning events prior to the shooting. The first taking place in 2016 when police received a domestic violence call over an incident concerning the attacker and his brother. Though there, no arrests were made. And then a year later in 2017, he was committed to an involuntary 72 hour psychiatric evaluation under a Florida law that allows people to be held for examination during a mental health crisis. But despite that, he didn't have a criminal record, and so officials said that he was able to legally purchase both guns used in the attack. And Waters saying there was no criminal arrest history. There is nothing we could have done to stop him from owning a rifle or a handgun. There were no red flags. But to that, you had a lot of people saying, What the hell are you? talking about? How are those two incidents not the definition of a red flag? And many others calling for more to be done. Though the more to be done, it means different things to different people. Right? With conservatives in the state saying this is a mental health crisis. With many people arguing back, racism isn't a mental health problem. Instead saying it's a symptom of deeply rooted hate and white supremacy, which is even sometimes amplified and promoted by the same people fighting common sense gun control, which is also why we saw tons of social media users taking direct aim at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, a man who has actively undermined gun control restrictions while also passing policies and using rhetoric that many have condemned as racist, which is also why we saw videos going viral of DeSantis literally being booed when he showed up at a vigil for the victim. I'm, I'm legit upset about this whole thing happening, guys. Yesterday. Thank you for doing this. I wanted to say to the councilwoman, and that is where today's daily dive into the news is gonna end. All right, guys, that's a video starting off a story about parasitic brain words by saying, I'm gonna put a new fear in your brain, is a lovely way of uh, saying, I know, right? <laughs> just for just ripping the band aid off. It hurt, it hurt, bro. I was like, yo, chill, chill. We went to Goodwill to find an outfit for Barbie, we managed to find pieces we'll reuse. Problem is that thanks to upscalers, upcyclers, goodwill prices are through the roof, so shine becomes a more affordable option. Problem is now even secondhand stuff is becoming not accessible. We got thrift stores charging real sale prices. I know, right? Alright guys, like, comment, subscribe. I do all my reactions live on Twitch. Thank you guys for watching. Um see you guys next video, okay guys? Uh, that sad story just makes me sad. The the this the 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 last story just makes me sad, guys. But um, yep, much appreciated, friends. Uh, see you guys next time. Check out Philip DeFranco in the description.